By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have some more Alpha 40 League Magic the Gathering for you. And that means that we're going to look at two decks that are completely of made up of Alpha cards. How cool is that? The first expansion, the set that started this whole game. And I'm really excited because these decks, they're something special. We're going to see Dion, who is playing white and blue control, like your traditional control, control magics, Swords to Plow, Sears, Counter Spells, and of course, some lovely Sarah Angels. And he's going to play against Niels, and Niels is playing with a brutal black and red deck that just wants to deal damage. He's playing with three Alpha Sheevan Dragons, three of them, and he's also playing with three Royal Assassins. So it's just going to be beautiful to look at his deck and to see Royal Assassins and Sheevan Dragons together on the table, both of Alpha. So I'm really excited to see these beautiful and unique cards. Now, um, during my last Alpha 40 League episode, I got a lot of questions about the rules. And first off, I'm happy uh, that everybody is just posting their questions and comments. Please continue doing that. Um, but I would just like to say, keep in mind that we're playing according to the Alpha rules. Now, I'm not a specialist when it comes to the Alpha rules. This was my first time actually playing at an Alpha event. Uh, what I do know is you don't have a stack in Alpha. Right, so that's a huge difference. Interrupts actually matter in Alpha, and also you don't have a first main and a second main. No, it's just one big main phase. Combat is also part of the main phase. So there are a lot of differences when it comes to Alpha. Now, if you have any questions about it, please feel free to ask them in the comments below, and maybe I can find uh, a judge or an Alpha specialist. Maybe you're listening to this and you're an Alpha specialist then please uh, contact me and uh, maybe you can answer the questions for me. I think that would be great and also would be great for the format. I'm also going to link uh, to the website that has all the Alpha 40 League information for you and you can find that link in the description below. So if you want to know more about the format, check the description below. So here I'm going to continue with the deck text like always. I think I'm going to start with uh, the deck of Dion. So it's going to be the control deck, white and blue. Um, if you want to skip this and go straight to the games, uh, you can do that by checking the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of them reads MTG Games. Click on there. That will take you straight to the action. And as for now, I'm going to start with the deck deck of Dion. Let's take a look at his control brew. And here we see the deck of Dion. So it's white and blue. The two colors that always have been about control. And of course, when you play Alpha, that's probably the route you're going to take, right? And why is it control? Well, first off, you've got counter spells in blue and you've got, it's got the word control in the title, control magic. So these two cards are great for a control player because you can control the board. You can choose what you want to counter and a good creature, you can let it pass and then steal it. Another reason why white and blue is so good in control is that white portion that you have a lot of removal in white. You've got disenchant, which is this crazy good card, one white and one, two destroy target enchantment or artifact and it's great for control player right if something will slip through you can just kind of control the situation you can take care of the artifacts and enchantments that annoy you with the distant chance and the one that are not the ones that are not so important you can just let it pass let it go and think you know what i'll let you have this little itsy peetsy whiny little artifact of yours because it's not a big threat to me anyway and on top of that you've got swords to plowsiers three swords to plowsiers that is basically uh, enabling you to destroy any creature threat. And then on top of that, you also have the Psy Blast, Psionic Blasts, one blue and two, to deal four damage to any target at instant speed. It also deals two damage to you. And there's even more control in this deck. We're not even done yet. We've got two IC Manipulators letting, uh, letting Dion here tap down a land artifact or creature of the opponent of choice. And then there's also that disrupting scepter that could be quite annoying as well. So there's always this, this option uh, with disrupting scepter in, in combination with counter magic where you have your disrupting scepter and your opponent knows, okay, if I'm not going to play out my, my card, the next turn my opponent can use disrupting scepter. But if I play out my card, my opponent has to blue open. So maybe I'm playing into a counter spell and that's kind of the annoyance that you have when you're playing against a deck like this. And, yeah, I think I think this looks like a very, very strong deck. The three Sarah Angels will have to do 
the job. I think maybe that's kind of the weak spot of this deck. Uh, it's really up for Dion to protect the Sarah Angel. And while I'm saying this, I'm saying that three Sarah Angels have to do the job. That's actually incorrect because, of course, Dion has three control magics. So he can deal damage with Sarah Angel. And if for some reason he might, may lose to Sarah's being unable to protect it with the counter spell, he can always use a control magic, steal something from the opponent and kill the opponent with uh, with his own creatures. Another option, of course, is to finish the game with the Psy Blast. Four damage is not nothing, and he's playing with three of these Psionic Blasts, so that's 12 damage in total with the direct damage. Maybe something you wouldn't expect from blue and white. Well, in old school, it is all possible. So this deck looking very strong. By the way, these Alpha 40 League decks are usually 40 cards. And I'm saying usually because the opponent today, Niels, has actually brought a 60 card deck to the table and it is very very sweet let's take a look at the deck of Niels. and here we see the deck of Niels royal dragons and i'm actually not sure Niels, if that is the title i just made it up because when i looked at your photo man i'm so jealous three three alpha shivan dragons three alpha royal assassins that's insane that is so cool you have to understand that back in the day back in the day when magic just started it was all about big, beefy creatures or creatures that were small like Royal, but had a super powerful ability like Royal Assassin. Royal Assassin can basically kill any creature on the board. That was huge value. Royal Assassin and Shivan Dragon were probably the most wanted and most powerful creatures in that era. And because it was all about creatures, they were also considered the most powerful. You have to understand card drawing spells, mana spells, you know, power nine, they were okay, but they weren't regarded as high as a Shivan Dragon or a Royal Assassin. You probably couldn't trade a Black Lotus for a Royal Assassin in those early days. You would probably have to add some cards to it. I know it sounds crazy, but that's the way it is. And even today, I mean, try to get your hands on an Alpha Shivan Dragon. I mean, wow. That's like, you need to sell your car if you want to have that. So it's really cool to see this. And what I like as well, it's called the Alpha 40 League. But what, let's say... Your name is Niels and you have this problem. You have too many cool cards. Hey man, just play with 60. It's okay, it's all good. So his deck is 60 cards. And I mean, as you can see, it is creature heavy, but there's also a lot of direct damage in this deck. Two fireballs, two disintegrates, two lightning bolts, and there are two beautiful mana flares. And I love to see mana flare with Dragon Whelp and with Sheevan Dragon, you know, that's really nice synergy. synergy. I also like to see the Paralyze in combination with the Royal Assassin, and also, of course, those two IC manipulators. Royal Assassin reads, uh, destroy, tap it to destroy target tapped creature. So, of course, your creature needs to be tapped. In this case, he's playing against Sarah Angel, so they don't tap. Well, what can you do? Tap the Sarah Angel down. Use your IC manipulator or your Paralyze, and then kill the Sarah Angel. Another card I'd like to point out is Force Field, because Force Field hasn't been reprinted, so maybe it's a card that is not that well known. Force Field is actually a very good card in this format. It's three to cast for an artifact, and you can pay one, and you lose only one life to an unblocked creature. So you can use it multiple times, and um, because it's a poly artifact, poly meaning, meaning multiple in this case, so you don't have to tap it, or else it would say mono artifact. Um, but you can tap it multiple times, and then you only take one damage from, let's say, Shivan Dragon, you know, <laughs> or a Sarah Angel in this case. So. Force Field is really, really a good creature. So I'm looking forward, uh, sorry, a good artifact. So I'm looking forward to see Force Field in action. Okay, Niels. Once again, I'm just going to say it one more time. You have an absolutely stunning deck. Same goes to you, Dion, but just seeing 60 cards, three Sheevans, three Royals. I mean, wow. Mind bobbling. Bobbling? Do you say that? Mind bobbling? Bubbling? I don't know. Anyway, blows my mind. This is the deck of Niels. Now let's go to the action. Game number one, and we're off to the races, and it's Niels with the Timmy Playmat uh, starting here on the right. He's got a uh, red and a black deck playing against Dion, who's playing with blue and white. Played a basic island and pass turn. There's a basic swamp and a pass. Another island here by Dion and passing turn. Well, we see a Hypnotic Spectre. It's not on the list, I believe. Oh, we see Force Field. So talked a little bit about Force Field in the deck deck. Three to cast for a Poly Artifact, meaning you can use it multiple times. You can pay one, and then you only take one damage from an attacking creature. So it's very useful in this format. And there we see the first planes, and there is 
a Jade Statue. Are we going to see a counter spell here by the young? Jade Statue, really interesting card. You can pay three during your combat and then it turns into a 3-6 Golem and you can attack with it or block with it, whatever you want. And you can only do it during combat and after combat it turns back to a statue. At the end of combat, yeah, so after. Okay, anyway, <laughs> there's another island and a pass. So nothing yet from uh, De Young, which is not completely crazy. He is the control player. So there we see Niels here animating the statue. I guess it's only two to animate, by the way, not three like I said earlier. Attacking here with the three six. Will we see a disenchant or a swords? None of that from De Young. He's taken the three damage, gonna drop to 17 and another land by Niels. And another island. He needs two planes to cast one of his Sarah Angels. There is a Soul Ring. So actually nothing much thus far. And now both players changing their lands a little bit. And Niels here looking at his hand. Is he going to cast something? Nope. He's going to animate the statue. And there is a Disenchant. And no creature, nothing from Niels, just a past turn. Maybe his hand is full of uh, direct damage. That could be the case. He's playing with two Disintegrates and two Fireballs. And it looks like Dion is a little bit in the tank here, trying to decide what to do. Going through his hand again and passing turns. So, wow. Not much happening in these first couple of turns. Both players are kind of waiting. There we see a Sengir Vampire 4-4 flying. And it gets a plus one, plus one counter if a creature that it dealt damage to dies. There is an Underground Sea tapping four. Will we see Control Magic? Here we go. And it's great for Dion in this matchup because his opponent doesn't have access to Tranquility or Disenchant. So that means that probably Nielser is forced to destroy his own Sengir Vampire. And playing a Hypnotic Spectre, instead a 2-2 Flyer. Of course he has that Force Field, so if Dion chooses to attack, he can just use the Force Field and only take one life instead of four. The question of course is, is he? Okay, he is going to attack. I'm not expecting a block here from Niels. Probably gonna... Oh, he is blocking! Interesting, I was expecting him just to use the Force Field. What an interesting choice. And there is... An icy manipulator and that's of course is the reason why Dion chose to attack and shouldn't there be a counter now on the Sengir? He's paying four. I mean he's got mana to pay five if, if it's needed. Interesting so I guess both players forgot to put a counter on there. That's kind of interesting. Anyway the Sengir is gone. He's playing a dark ritual now for three and oh look at this! Anime dead and erase dead. That is pretty sweet. So that Sengir Vampire is a 3-4, by the way, because of the anime dead. And passing turn. So that was a pretty good turn here from, uh, from Niels. And I guess both players forgot about that Sengir Vampire to uh, counter. Because after killing the Hypnotic Spectre, it should have uh, gotten a counter, become a 5-5, five five, and then uh, Niels... Had to should have added an extra mana to get rid of it with the fireball. Looks like both players are looking something up rules wise, and we're just gonna have to wait and see. These games were very relaxed, by the way. <laughs> it was they're really like you have to understand this is fast forwarded by two, and and even then it's quite slow. I mean, both players were just really relaxed. There it was a very relaxing day, to be honest. There's an hypnotic spec here hitting the board. There was a lot of uh, talking in between the games. Of course, a, a beer here and there. Very relaxed atmosphere. And there's the Hypnotic Spectre again, past turn. I think we might be in for a long game here, which is not surprising because Dion, of course, playing a control deck, having a lot of answers. And uh, Niels playing with a lot of removal, so he can just keep destroying the creatures that hit the board. I think the biggest problem for Niels is taking care of the enchantments. Perhaps also the artifacts. I actually don't know if he plays with Shatter. 
in his deck. I'm not sure. I had a look at the deck photo, of course, but I kind of forgot. So we'll just have to wait and see. Tapping four, but we see another control magic. Untapping again. Tapping five instead. Two white. I'm expecting a Sarah Angel. Exactly. Sarah Angel, you're hitting the board. I'm actually, I see a disintegrate there in the hand of, uh, of Niels there. We see a tap down on the Hypnotic Spectre. There is going to be a disintegrate here on the Sarah Angel. Sarah Angel is a goner and then probably an attack for three here. So that means Dion's going to drop to 14. Because of that Sangir attack. So 14 for Dion. It looks like it looks like uh, Niels is uh, doing pretty good. He's managing to destroy all the threats of Dion and um, he's got some creatures on the board. Of course, that Icy is annoying, but probably Dion is going to keep uh, tapping down the Hypnotic Spectre and then taking three each turn from the Sengir Vampire. So let's see what uh, Dion can do here. Tapping five, another, another Sarah Angel. Okay. Only one card in hand by Niels. I do believe that card is a Paralyze. Tapping down his... Ooh, is Sengir in this case? Taking a little bit of a risk here. So, oh, there's a Paralyze. So that means it's going to be tapped down. Will we see a Counterspell by Dion? I think a Counterspell would be worth it. I guess he doesn't have one. Oh, Psionic Blast. Taking care of the Hypnotic Spectre does take two damage himself. But it's totally worth it because he doesn't want to take, uh, he doesn't want to discard a card or take damage from the hippie. So there is an untap here, paying four to untap the Sarah Angel. And of course, the Sarah doesn't tap when it attacks, so that's quite nice. And there we see Niels using the force field, so he's only taking one damage from the Sarah instead of four. And here you can really see the power of force field. Niels can keep this up for 19 more turns. So it's up for Dion now to kind of try to find an answer to that force field. Of course, he plays with the disenchants. There we see a control magic on the Sengir Vampire. And it looks like the tables have slightly turned here for Niels. I'm expecting that Icy to be used end of turn, tapping down the Dragon Whelp. Actually tapping down the force field, and that means he cannot use the force field because we're playing alpha rules. If an artifact is tapped down, it doesn't work anymore. So that is pretty cool, right, isn't it? So the force field is disabled by the Icy Manipulator. I guess in Alpha only, Icy Manipulator is even a better card than it already is. Another control magic. Wow. Attacking for seven. Oh man, remember, he cannot use the force field because it's tapped. Oh man. There we see a lightning bolt on the Dragon Whelp. And I'm expecting it just to happen exactly. So Dragon Whelp is gone. But this is not bad news for Dion, right? Because with one control magic, he gets rid of two cards from Niels. There's a Royal Assassin. This is actually quite nice. Counterspell on the Royal. Ay, 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 ay. And I think one of the things that, that Dion is really good at, that's why he's such a good control player, is knowing when to counter and what to counter. Dealing seven, look at Niels' life total going down to five and tapping down that force field is just crucial here for this game. Without the Icy Manipulator, Niels could have lasted for turns and turns and turns, but now it's probably not going to work out. He needs a little miracle here. I think that's uh, Mana Flare. That's not going to do it. And that's it. Game number one here, one by De Young. And uh, we don't have any sideboards, so we're going to continue straight away with game number two. Game number two is about to start and it's one game up for Dion there and there we see Niels starting and maybe it's nice to know that uh, in alpha rules you'll also draw a card when you're starting the game. Another important difference here is that you cannot just take a mulligan. You can only take a mulligan and there we see Dark Ritual into Jade Statue. Great second turn here for Niels uh, but as I was saying you can only take a mulligan if you have only lands or no lands at all. So there's no in between and here we see what can happen with those rules? We see Dion being forced to discard here, so probably he had to keep a one land hand here. There's an attack by the Jade Statue, so this could be a really quick game. Okay, Dion at least finding a land here that enables Disenchant for him now. 
animating Jade statue. There's the disenchant. Okay, so this could be something. So no hypnotic specter, for example, for uh, Niels here, who's just passing turn after using his two mana to animate. No land from Dion here. Land number four for Niels, not missing a land drop. No dragon whelp, unfortunately, for him passing turn. So giving Dion some time to maybe get back into this. He's drawing a card. I believe he's got eight in hand now. Has to decide what to discard or play a land, of course. I'm sure he prefers the last option, but of course he has to have a land in hand to do that. I don't think he has or else he would have played it already. Probably trying to decide what to discard here. It looks like it's a difficult decision. And hopefully for this game, I mean, he can find some lands later. Discarding a Disrupting Scepter, passing turn, tapping three. There we see a Royal Assassin. Of course, no counterspell from Dion because he doesn't have two blue. Now he does have two blue. At least he can counter now. And I mean, he's slowly getting back into it. And the good news for Dion is despite his mana stumbles, he's still on 17. It's not that bad. I think this is a very good counter spell on the Icy Manipulator. Icy Manipulator can also tap down lands. And that would have been problematic for Dion. So at least he was able to counter. And there's a Swords taking care of that Royal Assassin. That means Niels is going to go up to 21 life. But as I was saying, this is not too bad for Dion, you know, he's, he's very, he cannot find lands, so you would expect him to be much further behind than he actually is. He's still on 17. And look at this, Niels also stumbling on lands now, just passing turn, not finding anything to cast. This is really good news for Dion, and he's found another land, four lands now, beautiful Tundra, tapping, and there we see his Icy Manipulator and passing turn. There we see, oh, Shiva Dragon in the house! It's not going to be great because of that Icy Manipulator, but it is really cool to see an Alpha Shivan Dragon. Oh, Control Magic! This is brutal! This is brutal! Paralyzed, yeah, that's not going to do... It's going to do something, but it's not going to do much. Dion is gladly going to pay the four land next turn for mana to untap that baby. Oh, man. This is a slap in the face. For Niels here, he has to find a terror, he has to find maybe a ritual and a fireball or something. Doesn't he cannot do that right now? Doesn't have enough for it. Looking at his hand, I mean, a royal would also be nice, although Dion has that icy manipulator. Oh man, all of a sudden the tables have turned, and it just shows what a powerful card control magic is if you don't have an answer for it. There is another paralyzed that means that. Or actually, they're discussing it. Okay, so I guess it doesn't mean... I want to say that means that he has to pay 8, but I guess it doesn't. Now they're reading the card and they're trying to figure it out. I don't feel really comfortable about um, giving my opinion on this current board state. Why? Because it's the alpha rules and I'm really not uh, knowledgeable when it comes to these alpha 40 league rules. I, I am learning as, as I go along, you know, as I'm playing some alpha magic, as I'm, you know, making these videos. I do kind of up my game there in the knowledge department. And I guess both of these players are now going to find out what actually happens when you play another Paralyze. So I fast forwarded it a little bit and it looks like both players have found out that, okay, if you play another Paralyze, it doesn't mean you pay eight, you just pay four to untap. So I guess that made Niels decide he's not gonna play the other Paralyze. Of course, that would have made a huge difference because Dion only has four mana, right? And now Dion has to decide in his upkeep if he wants to untap, and of course he's gonna do that here, paying for to untap the mighty Sheevan Dragon, and he's gonna attack with it. And there we see the life total drop of Niels. He's gonna to drop to 16, being on 21 before. And uh, he's gonna pass turn there, using the Icy to tap down one of the lands of Niels. And interesting here to see is that at the start of the game, Dion had huge mana issues, and now Niels is actually not finding a lot of lands anymore. There's a Mana Flare. Okay, that could kind of help him. It is dangerous, though, because he's also giving a lot of, of lands and mana to his opponent. On the other hand, he is behind. He has to do something. So it's an understandable play here by Niels. There we see Dion only tapping two lands because of the Mana Flare to untap the Sheevan Dragon. Attacking with the Sheevan here. Niels dropping to 11, passing turn. And we know that um, Niels has a lot of Disintegrates, Fireballs, and all that in his deck. 
And now with the mana flare, having only three lands open, it means six mana, which is enough for a fireball or disintegrate to get rid of the Sheevan. And here he goes, tapping quite a lot of lands here. There is the fireball, boom. And if there's no counter spell, the Sheevan dragon is a goner, but there is a counter spell by Dion. And this is bad news for Niels because he's tapped out, has to pass turn here. Another untap, that means he's gonna drop to six. There's nothing Niels can do or being completely tapped out. And it's not looking great for him. And attacking here. So Niels is going to drop to six life. I do believe we play with mana burn, by the way, in this Alpha 40 League. So if Dion is going to use his Icy next turn, he's got to take a damage from the burn. I'm not sure if he did that previously. Doesn't matter much though, because he's so far ahead. Of course, he cannot pump the Sheevan. So that does mean that with six, Neil still has two turns to go. And look at that, he's using the Icy. I believe he should take a point of damage here. And there is an Icy Manipulator. That's actually pretty good. That's gonna help Niels here. He can tap down the Sheevan Dragon. And then again, I wonder if they will remember the mana burn or maybe I'm missing something. We'll just have to wait and see what both players are going to do. So the Icy Manipulator on the table now. And as long as that Icy sticks, I mean, you know, Niels has control. He can live to fight another day. Looks like he's going through his hand again. Probably, yeah, I'm expecting him to pass here. He just needs to keep the mana open. Oh, disenchant! Oh, killer! Oh, man, that is a killer, because I do believe he's got enough burn to take care of the Sheevan. Gonna go to one, so he's still kind of alive here. It's not over till it's over. Cyblast. Yeah, now it's, um, it's over. I have to admit... I was a little disappointed. I was hoping really that Niels could kind of get the win. We would get a game number three because Niels, your deck, man. It's so cool to look at. Anyway, this is it, Dion. Congratulations on your victory here. Alpha 40 League Magic. I liked it. Like I said in the introduction, by the way, if you have any comments or questions about the rules, please post them down below. I'd love to... Uh, Look at them, I can probably not answer them, but like I said in the introduction, I'm gonna to try to find somebody who can answer them for me, some Alpha 40 specialists. And uh, yeah, I just find it a really interesting format. The big problem for me is you gotta have the Alpha cards, which I don't, but I guess I can borrow something or play some revised Alpha, I don't know. Anyway, uh, it's been really fun to look at these cards. They're just gorgeous, and this is the way that Magic was meant to be, in my, from my perspective, at least. Uh, let me know in the comments below uh, what you think of this kind of Magic, and also leave a like if you wanna help the channel out. Uh, leave a comment, all those things help, and it's free. And if you're not a subscriber yet, if you're new to the channel, welcome, and please subscribe, hit that button. All that helps Timmy Talks grow. Um, and then there's one more thing that you can do. You can also sponsor the channel financially and you can do that by becoming a patron via Patreon. There's probably a card popping up right now. You can click on that info card that will take you straight to the Timmy Talks Patreon page where you can find out how you can support the channel. The nice thing is if you do, you're not only helping me continue creating content for you, but you're also helping yourself because your name will be in the end scroll. How cool is that? But also you get access to the Discord where all the patrons and channel members are together talking about magic. I'm there as well, so you can ask me questions about your crazy brews. Another cool thing is I organize at Timmy Talks tournaments every now and then, and they're especially for channel members and patrons to thank them for their support. So if you wanna take part of that, then that's also a great reason to join the Timmy Talks Patreon program. Okay, enough said. Uh, let's go to the wonderful end scroll and take a look at all the amazing and fantastic channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. Here we go. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Oh, <laughs> 
Think it is, think it is, somber, cause he...